We are starting to see 5G ready antennas coming to market, but just what does that mean? And is it time to upgrade the antennas on your boat or RV? We'll talk about that in a second. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here today to talk to you about 5G ready antennas. And well, what does it mean for an antenna to be 5G ready? And well, what, what, what are all the, what's all this gear we got here? So first off, talking about antennas. Antennas are the piece of a cellular reception system that actually pulls the signal out of the air and runs it down wires and down into your routers or hotspots or whatever you have inside that is the actual modem communicating. And so an antenna is a pretty critical component. If your ears are plugged up, you're not going to be able to hear much signal and well, that's kind of where the antenna comes into play. Now, back in the 3G era, cellular was really broadcast over just two frequencies, or you could think of that like channels. And so antennas were pretty simple designs. They were just um, you know, single band or dual band antennas that had to only pick up those two frequencies. Didn't matter, they could ignore the rest, and things were simple. When we went into the 4G era, particularly over time, more and more and more frequency bands began to matter. The carriers are broadcasting on a channel here, and a channel here, and a channel here. And oftentimes they'd be using technology like carrier aggregation to combine channels that were in different places and put them together. So it mean, meant antennas to be effective had to tune in to a wider range of frequencies. And these kind of antennas are called wideband antennas because they're tuning in to a wider range of frequencies. They could tune into all of, you know, a whole bunch of channels across a wider range of spectrum. Now, in the 5G era, it's kind of the same thing, but even more, because 5G is able to take advantage of even more spectrum, you know, even lower spectrum, and even substantially much higher spectrum than 4G cellular um, tapped into. To. So 5G ready antennas are basically saying, hey, we're, we're an antenna that can tune into more spectrum. We're tuned for a wider band than um, what you would have found in 4G antennas. So what you have now is with 5G, you've got such a wider range of spectrum that matters that a lot of the older 4G antennas just aren't going to be wide enough to matter. And even, well, 5G antennas are going to have particular limitations. They might not be tuned to be, you know, universally wide. So it really helps to understand what are the different frequencies that are mattering for 5G. And to dive deeper into that, you first really have to understand that there are two hugely different uh, frequency ranges or flavors of 5G that you need to understand. First off, let's talk about millimeter wave 5G. This is the kind of spectrum that is completely new, um, hasn't been used for cellular before. It is 24 gigahertz and above, so super high frequency spectrum, um, which allows for really, really wide channels, which allows for incredibly crazy fast speeds. We're already seeing real world speeds over a gigabit a second, actually even over two gigabits per second. So insanely fast speeds over this millimeter wave 5G. But because it's such a high frequency signal, millimeter wave 5G does not travel very far, does not penetrate walls or windows very well at all. And so it's very short range, very, very limited. And when it comes to the antennas and the modems that receive this, you know, something like an iPhone 12 has millimeter wave uh, radios in support, but the antennas and the modems are millimeters apart from each other inside. Um, millimeter wave 5G will not travel over an antenna cable, so it only works when you can build the modem and the antenna and everything into one integrated spot. So that means external antennas will never be useful for millimeter wave 5G. It's just not going to run down an antenna cable. It is basically defying the laws of physics impossible. So don't worry about millimeter wave 5G reception or compatibility when you're shopping for 5G antennas. In the future, someday there might be devices that go on your roof of your RV or boat that actually have the modem and the router and all the electronics and the antennas and everything all in one. That's when millimeter wave will come to mobile vehicles. But until that kind of gear is widespread and mainstream, don't worry about millimeter wave. So what, what should you worry about? Well, that's the other flavor of 5G, and that's known shorthand as sub-6, or it is the 5G signals that are broadcast at 6 gigahertz or lower. So um, basically between 600 megahertz and 6 gigahertz. It's a huge range of spectrum there. 
um, is actually practical to be received over antennas and to run down cables. It's actually spectrum that is not all that different than what 4G LTE has been using and what actually Wi-Fi has used in the past. So this spectrum can work over antennas and that's now where we're starting to see new 5G ready antennas come to market. Now to be as future proof as possible when you're shopping for 5G antennas, you want to have one that covers as much of this sub-6 band as it can, ideally the frequencies that matter to your carrier. So at the low end, we've got 600 megahertz to 700 megahertz, which has been super critical to T-Mobile. This is the 600 megahertz LTE band 71 or 5G band N71. Very worthwhile if you are a T-Mobile customer to make sure you have that band covered. Then we've got a lot of the bands that have been used for 4G that are already covered by a lot of antennas. And then once you get up above, you know, 2 gigahertz, um, 2.4 gigahertz, you're pushing into kind of what's known as the C band. This is a new spectrum that is being used for 5G, and a lot of the newer antennas are starting to support C band. And some of them go all the way up to 6 gigahertz, which is basically when 5G signals will be overlaid on Wi-Fi, which a high frequency Wi-Fi is using 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. So because um, cellular 5G is going to start using some of that spectrum. Going all the way up to 6 gigahertz can be useful, but maybe not necessarily super useful at the super high end of the frequencies. So what are the options and what should you look for if you are considering um, installing a 5G ready antenna? We've got a, a few different examples here and it kind of shows some of the, the trade-offs and the different design decisions. One of the first things to consider is just how many actual antennas are going to be inside the antenna. This is where we get into MIMO. So in the LTE era, almost every device was focused on 2x2 two two MIMO and some would go to 4x4 four four MIMO, so supporting either two antennas or four antennas internally. 5G devices, uh, 5G, 5G modems really, really like to have four antennas and support 4x4 four four MIMO. So look for that when you're planning your 5G device, your 5G antennas. You'll see some 5G ready things like this uh, um, pointing X ball. This is a directional 5G ready antenna, but it is only a two by two device. They also have a version of this that is four by four. So if you really want to maximize your 5G future proofing and potential, look for the version that has four by four. Just keep that in mind that you might be giving up half of your speed potential in the future um, by only having two antennas inside of here to work with. Go with, you know, seven in one style. So you've got, you know, this is a lot of cables coming down. You can keep in mind, you got to route this through your, through your roof and to wherever your router is as short as possible. But you've got four cellular, four by four MIMO, uh, two Wi-Fi, brings up a six, plus then a GPS antenna. So seven, seven in one is very common. Um, this one here is a Parsec Husky big giant magnetic mouth base to clamp onto a metal vehicle roof is also a seven in one style. And uh, here is a pep wave Puma that is currently pole mounted. It's a, um, a five in one. So it's got the four by four Mimo for cellular and a one GPS. So keep in mind, if you're focusing on 5G antennas, you really want to think about um, getting four by four Mimo because that'll give you the best possible reception. Look at that then look at the frequency bands that the antenna supports. You'll see that some 5G ready antennas that were intended for the international market don't go down to 600 megahertz. If you look at their specs, if they stop at you know, 700 megahertz, they don't go all the way down to 600 megahertz for reception. They're going to perform very poorly on T-Mobile, both for LTE, if you're using it on with current 4G equipment, and, and for T-Mobile's future 5G. So, we're seeing now a lot of these designs be refreshed for the U.S. market where T-Mobile is a major player and they're now starting to include 600 megahertz. Make sure you're getting that compatibility if you have T-Mobile or think in, in the future lifetime of the antenna that T-Mobile might matter to you. And pay attention to the higher frequency ranges. Make, you probably for a 5G antenna you want to go at least up into the 3 gigahertzes, if not all the way up to 6 gigahertz reception. And if you can, look at the actual data graphs on the antenna to see, does it have any um, dips or places on the specs where it actually dips into negative gain or you know, not that great reception-wise? Because they might say they support a wide frequency range, but have a dropout or dead zone and a critical band in the middle. But 
most quality brand antennas will then you know once probably if they're claiming 5g ready they're probably going to be doing okay for the future but one of the most important things to think about when you're looking at antennas though is just what is going to fit best with your and setup and your needs like something like this x ball is directional you have to mount it on a pole aim it very carefully to get it tuned in, but it will give you a much higher gain, so a much more powerful signal at distance. So if you're setting up at a long-term place and um, have the time to deal with setup and teardown, that might be a sort of thing that you really want to invest in. But more often than not, um, particularly if you're in a boat that is never sitting still or you're in an RV that moves regularly, you just want the antenna to be there all the time and working for you. So things that kind of roof mount like this, and most of these antennas have spigot mounts that just kind of drill a hole and put the cables through and uh, then route them to where you need them is ideally with minimal extensions needed. Um, these are very great because they're small, low profile, always working, always there. If you want something a bit more temporary, um, this Tarsic Husky, it's, it's literally Husky, you can barely lift it, is so heavy with this big metal base on the bottom, is a, a big magnetic base that lets it raise up several extra inches and the magnets make it more of a temporary mount. It will clamp down onto a vehicle roof. Or if you prefer not to have the magnet base, it will be similar spigot mount with the big metal hole and clamp down onto a roof like that on top of the hole. So you've got different kinds of flexibility with that. And then you've got things like this Puma, which are flexible. This Pepe Puma has got both a spigot mount and clamp into a roof, or it has a, an angle bracket that you can put on the bottom of it and mount it to a pole. So if you want something more temporary that you attach to a ladder or raise and lower for a little extra height. So a lot of different flexibility. That is probably the most important thing to think about when you're picking the antennas is the form factor that is going to work for you. Um, then, you know, a little bit of extra gain here and there is kind of secondary to what is actually practical. Now, finally, a few concluding thoughts. Um, keep in mind that 5G devices with antenna ports are still very, very rare. You know, you're not going to be able to, you might have a 5G phone, but there's no antenna ports on a phone. And quite a few of the 5G hotspots that have come to market don't have um, antenna ports, or if they do, they only have two antenna ports, and you're not being able to take advantage of the full 4x4 MIMO capability of sub-6 frequency bands. And, well, the, the 5G-ready routers, the, the routers like a, a Pepwave Max Transit and stuff like that, they're not out yet in 5G version. So anything you're doing right now is you're putting an antenna on your roof. It might be hard to install. You might be running the wires and stuff. You're future-proofing. You're, you're basically preparing for future devices to better take advantage of 5G technology, it's not going to matter a lot for right now. Unless, well, because T-Mobile is already using 600 megahertz spectrum for even 4G, well, if you're a T-Mobile customer, get it, find some way to tune in at 600 megahertz, that frequency band. Um, you might want to invest in upgrading now, but otherwise, if you've already got antennas that are working for you, they probably will cover, actually, the bands that will be the initial sub-6 bands that Verizon and AT&T are using. So you might not need to rush out and get a 5G-ready antenna until a year or two down the road when um, the other carriers start to push more into the C-band and the higher bands that your existing 4G antennas will not tune into. So buying a 5G antenna now is all about future-proofing. Good thing to do if you're starting from scratch, definitely look to the 5G antennas. They're not all that much more expensive than 4G antennas. And if you're buying now, <laughs> go for the 5G versions. But otherwise, don't rush out to upgrade. And, well, there's so much more we could talk about, about antennas, the trade-offs, the you know, what, what all these specs and details mean. We have a really big in-depth guide at mobileinternetinfo.com slash cellular antennas. So check that out and dive into that. And, um, well, I hope this little sneak peek of what 5G antennas are and might mean to you is useful. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this new and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.